hey, I think it's a great day to make a fairy garden. I had some ideas after I found this giant soup terrain strawberry. There was a lid on this at one time, but I went to a yard sale and I found this without the lid. It's okay for us because we're going to make a fairy garden out of this. We don't need a lid anyway. So check it out. Isn't it cool? It's nice, smooth, ceramic. All the parts of a strawberry here. Let me show you some of the other findings that I have that we can work with. Okay, the strawberry has an opening maybe about 10 inches across and it gives us a lot of room to add a living plant. I have a little succulent here, nice healthy thing. And we're going to put that in um, and plant it in some dirt. Also, I have some other interesting little findings here that I don't know if we'll have room for all of them, but we'll start working them in. Now this is um, a bag of stones, and these are black. They're just decorative stones for um, potting plants and things like that. Let's see, what else? I have a white stone from a beach, and this has a nice flat surface, so I thought we could sit something on that, perhaps. Okay, what else? We have some kind of Mardi Gras beads. We always look for shiny things that fairies like to find when they're out scavenging around for things for their environment. Um, I have a couple pieces of fence, a brown and a white. Let's see if we can use them somehow. Also, we have a little turtle. He's a cute little guy. He looks a little rough. That's okay. That's the charm of having a fairy garden. You find rough and unusual things that fairies just look for when they're out in the wild. Now we have a very fancy little pine cone. I painted it purple and put some glitter on it. And we'll work that in somehow. Also, I have um, a little handful of kind of beads. They're, they're, they don't have holes in them, but they're um, glittery and little blue accent beads. Very attractive. And I have a little clay uh, pot. Now this is actually a saucer for a clay pot. And as you see, it has a broken piece out of it which gives it a little extra charm for a fairy garden. I like that kind of thing. All right, there's another little uh, darling owl that we can add. Now I picked up um, some black shiny pieces of glass. I have a whole little pot full of them. I think we'll be able to work those in. They're shiny, but they're maybe a little bit of a dark side to our fairy garden too. <laughs> Let's see what we come up with. Then I have a beach stone here. This comes from Long Beach Island. It's well worn. It's been in the ocean years and years. And this is from my friend Kim. Thanks Kim. I knew one day I'd find a way to work this in. <laughs> okay, what else do we have here? I brought along a little faucet um, handle and this was from my dad's collection of old faucet handles well some fairy found this and we're going to use that too <laughs> also from my collection of my mom and dad's things I found some Coates and Clark's old wooden spools now it's been a long time since we've seen them probably because a little fairy had them stashed somewhere and in my grandma's box of buttons, I found some really great buttons. And these are ones that you won't see these days either. They are very old and very interesting. And I'm sure they really dressed up some items of clothing along the way. And in that tin was this spool of thread. <laughs> so we're going to work that into. 
Now there's a couple of little seashells that we found on the beach. I uh, have a little character of a lobster here, which may be coming along on the beach side. Let's see, there's also a little butterfly. Now this has a little magnet on the back, so we have to find something metal to let him fasten himself onto. And somewhere a little purse came along, and this is little, but it could serve as a treasure chest along the way here. All right, now let me show you the characters. Here we have a little fairy, and I bought these at Michael's, these little characters that are um, going to dress up our garden. And then some very unusual guys. These are from the Woodland Fairy Tale Collection. And this is a wizard. We don't usually have them in our fairy gardens here, but we also have his pet. <laughs> a nice little dragon. <laughs> All right, so let's see how much of this we can put together into the pot. We'll start by adding some potting soil and getting the plant in first. And then we'll work around that. Okay, now there's quite a big cavity here, so let's start by filling up the nice potting soil. bit of a mess but this is fine all right now we have quite a bit of dirt in here we're going to start by planting the plant and this has nice roots on it could actually be broken up into a couple plants so why don't we do that we can get a couple plants out of this pot we'll save some for another fairy garden and we'll plant some of these on each side. We want to have enough room for all of the, um, we want to have enough room for placing all the pieces. Right, I'm going to get a little more dirt and add to this too. Now I'm going to bring the soil up to the top of the container because after we water it, it will sink down. We don't want the fairy sinking down. So let's get it all filled up. That's better. All right. Now, I think the main piece here to me is the wizard. So the wizard is pretty large. We gotta get him placed. Take a good look. Huh. He's really got a lot of great detail. He's got a scepter with a with a, an owl on there. See the little owl on top? And he's pointing and he has a, a bag of goodies here. Who knows what that is? Something magical, I guess. Nice cape. He's beautiful. So I was thinking to make him stand out, we could take this nice white stone that would really show him off. And there's a bumpy side and there's a flat side. So let's put the bumpy side down and let's put him at the highest point because he's giving a, a big lecture here <laughs> to somebody about something. But standing on the top of the rock, after we get finished with this, we could actually glue him in place but for now, I think he'll be fine right there. They seem to stay where they're placed pretty well. Now, on the other side of him is the dragon. Let's get him out here. It's nice if you can find these guys on sale or with a coupon. That's usually how I do it when I buy things at Michael's. Um, 
and then most of the other pieces that I add to keep the cost down are things that I find around the house or out in the yard. <laughs> now check out this dragon. Wow. He's got glitter coming out of his mouth showing the fire on his tongue. He's really cute. And let's turn him around here. He's got a lot of detail also. His little pointy head and wings and lots of colors on his wings. So I think he even has uh, glitter on his toenails showing how sharp they are. Oh, we'll give you another look at him in a little while. So, uh, do we want him over here? Or do we want him over here? Because wherever we place him, the opposite side of the garden is going to belong to the fairy. I think let's put him up here at the top. All right. All right. Now, as we work some other pieces and we may lift or move a little bit, I'd like to use the black stones around where that um, darker part of the garden is going to be. And then the fairy itself, she's going to be down here in a little um, friendlier part of the garden. So there we'll have her little friends like the turtle and the owl. Okay. All right, now she's beautiful also. Look at those fancy little wings. They're glittery and pretty. She's a cute little fairy. All right, I'll give you a closer look after I get them in place. All right, now let's see. She should sit on something too, I think. So I'm going to take the pot. And we're going to give her a little place to sit to sit. That way she'll have a good view of what's going on in the garden. All right. Now I think all of these, the purse is another rather large piece and this is part of her territory. It's just a little flippy purse. It's a mini purse that an adult might use to put a tube of lipstick in there <laughs> or something like that or a little girl would carry some change. But we're going to use it to um, put her treasures. And we're going to keep that to separate the garden and the wizard. So we'll prop it open with one of these spools. And we will lay the purse sideways here. Pop it open with a spool. But I think we should put some of the treasures coming out of the little purse. Like some of these nice shiny beads. Let's, let's take one strand. See how that goes. Put them in and let them start to pull out. Into her territory here. All right. Now back up here by the, um, by the dragon, we could take this pot and take the label. Give him a place to stand. To show him off a little bit. And if you think he might be standing around a swamp or some water, we could put these glassy beads in here. These are just to give you that impression that you're standing in blue water. So we'll fill that little pond.
All right, now, what else can we do to dress up some of this stuff here? I think I'm going to have to let the beach stone sit in the middle here. And then we'll work in some of Grandma's buttons, which I think could also be part of could be part of the treasure chest. And they also could be part of a pathway. The pathway could be the nice shiny black stones. And this is what's going to lead us all around. So make sure you give yourself a little walkway in here. I think it's just a great idea to cover up the dirt with something uh, shiny, even if it's dark, because sometimes the darkness makes the other things stand out. So I usually start with too many things, that's for sure, but you don't want to run out of things as you're building. And if you feel that things are not going to stay steady, take the time to glue them down, but I'm usually satisfied with the way they, the way they stay still. Pretty button. It's fun to uh, show your friends the little gardens that you make and then watch them find, oh, look at that, look at that. Where did that come from? <laughs> and then I have this, oh, I really wanted to put the pine cone in here. So we're going to put the little pine cone in between. use the butterfly also. So since it has a magnet on the back, you can just let it clip itself onto the parts of the purse, a little free dimension. I want to use my dad's faucet handle. And I wonder We're going to take my dad's faucet handle and put it on top of that rock and give the, um, the little wizard a little more height there. And I did find another little shiny penny. We're going to make sure the buttons get sticking out here on the top. See if I can make this one button stay on top of the spool. Yeah, there we go. And then I'll put the penny next to the fairy. And I'm going to add another fancy button in there. I've got this little owl. We can Sit on the top of the rock. And I guess I'm going to have to leave out a few of those little extra pieces. I think that's jam-packed enough. 
Oh, I wish I had a bigger strawberry. I would add a couple more things. But for now, I think this is beautiful. So my message today is, if you find something like a half of a strawberry pot, give it a new purpose. Build yourself a fairy garden and you'll have something new again to enjoy. Thanks for watching.